Throughout the history of Overwatch, there have been some really terrifying metas. Whether they took over metas, were frustrating to play against, or just downright horrifying, these are the most disgusting metas of all time. Starting off with number 7, the Double Shield meta. Now this one probably takes the cake for the most annoying meta to play against, and it was the one that probably affected the most amount of people playing ranked, because regardless of the rank you were in, two shields, Arissa and Sigma, put in front of you, they had a huge amount of shields that they could just cycle over and over again, and you felt like you could never break it. And honestly, on some characters, you just felt useless, like Genji, who couldn't poke down the shield in any meaningful way, nor could he go through it against enemies that took no damage, he was just a useless character, and there was a lot of the characters that just got completely around eradicated in the double shield meta. Now honestly, we're just scratching the surface of some of these metas. Next up is the Grav Dragon meta, because back in the day, if you damage boosted a Hanzo Dragon, which you could do, it could kill people straight through Transcendence, and Mercy and Hanzo was a very common duo support lineup going along with like a Ryan and a Zarya, so Hanzo slotted into that, and the Hanzo would get damage boosted, he would get a Dragon much faster, and so one of his Dragons, he would just free roll, try to get some value with it, but then the next one, he would go right into the Grav, damage boosted, and remember, players played a lot closer back then, Grav was stronger, so it would really get three four five people doesn't matter if there was a trance it would pop and then the mercy damage boosted dragon would still kill them through it this was most popular about season 10 of overwatch 1 and it was a very very strong ultimate combo that just basically took over the game for quite some time until they made it so that hanzo's dragon strike could not get damage boosted by mercy anymore now, everyone knows about Ghost, which is on this list, by the way, but we're not going to talk about that. There was actually a precursor to Goats that a lot of people called Slambulance. That's right, a four tank, two support combo that had Ryan, Zarya, Diva, and Roadhog. Now, remember, everyone generated ultimates much faster, and you played Lucio and Moira with this composition, and the idea was that you would get a coalescence so freaking quickly. Orb, chain heal them, you get a coal, and then all of a sudden, you win off the back of that ultimate that you basically got like it was a freaking ability. But this was not even the most horrifying meta that we've seen. Because we gotta move on to the Beyblade meta, which is basically the speed boost nano meta, where Ana could nano anything, and it got a 30% speed boost, and this could be stacked, so you could nano something, give it speed, and then Lucio could amp up and give that person more speed, and of course, we know that Lucio and Ana work really well together, so what they did is they put it on a Reaper. They would nano a Reaper, they would speed a Reaper, they would bubble a Reaper, and they would send him in to kill everything. So, yeah, and even when a Reaper wasn't the best option, still a Rhine that was nano that could go at the speed of sound could mop up and kill everybody. And even after the Reaper meta died, we saw a lot of even triple tank compositions playing around a nano Reinhardt. But with specifically Beyblade meta was a really nice nice time for reaper to shine even if it was mainly off the back of just getting ability dumped and old dumped by nano speed boost and bubble now move on to three on the list and of course we got to talk about goats goats is kind of the final form of slambulance with the addition of brig who's incredibly powerful as we all know and goats kind of had a terror of rain over all of overwatch where some might think that that's what killed the game others actually miss goats and there's players all in between but regardless of how you feel about it the synergy within goats is kind of a marvel right everything works really well together and it's like a perfectly well-oiled machine i think goats would kill superman or maybe even goku i mean goats is just you know it's gonna mid diff your favorite superhero i mean it's not even close goats is just it so yeah this this comp might be one of the scariest although it's not the scariest because we got some more number two on the list we have the pull hook combo the hook and cook the freaking pulled pork i mean there was just like a lot of names for this composition but it basically centered around Arissa's former pull and roadhog's hook so you didn't have any opportunity to hit someone with the hook? Well, guess what? Arissa could pull someone around a corner at a position, and then the hog could hook them, and boom, free kill, free kill, free kill on a cooldown. You just cycled together, you got some free kills. And this composition was really powerful in some stages in pro play, and it was super, super strong and ranked. I think it was one of the best duos that you could rock in any meta, in any composition, because you just got to get kills every cooldown cycle. Kill, 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 and win fights that way. It was super strong, but scary as well, because you could be minding your own business around a corner, get pulled, get killed out of nowhere, and you're like, what the hell did I do wrong? I just got double CC'd and insta-killed. <laughs> like, yeah, it was, it was definitely a rough time. 
But uh, there is actually one more scary, horrifying meta. But before that, let's talk about some honorable mentions. We got Moth Mercy. Now, there's not really one set composition that centered around this Mercy, but this Mercy was so strong, she basically was the meta. She created the meta around her, but I don't really think I could give her, like, one defining meta. Same thing with Ironclad Bastion. Well, at the time, Ironclad was really, really strong and kind of cemented the meta, but it was really only live for a week, and it was kind of just, like, play crap that protected Bastion, whatever it was. It's just because one character was super strong. And then I'm not going to talk about Dive or Double Sniper because those compositions still exist in some capacity and they existed a lot and there was like way more variations than there is like a singular form of it. So if I were to talk about Dive, I think I could talk about like seven or ten different types of Dive and uh, Double Sniper is pretty obvious. It's just kind of changed slightly. So yeah, I'm not going to talk about those even though all of those are definitely really dominant. Those are not included in this video, but number one, the most disgusting, horrifying, frustrating composition to probably ever play against, especially if you're a support or a tank player, is Hack Fist. Now, to be fair, this composition was made slightly in response to GOATS, but it was also just used randomly and ranked to just terrorize people. And this is the idea. You get a Sombra and a Doomfist together, and remember, Doomfist is DPS Doomfist that is super, super lethal, but he's still squishy. You know, he's fragile, so he can die if he gets focused. You get rid of that because you hack a target, mainly a Rhine or a support or whoever you want with the Sombra, and you bubble in your Doomfist with the Zarya, and your Doomfist goes in and kills everybody. That's that's kind of the idea. The reason it was so frustrating is because it took all the agency away from you, right? If you're hacked, you can't do anything, and you were hacked for a very long time back then. And if the Doomfist was bubbled, you couldn't CC him or stop him in any way, nor could your team do that. And he's going to one-shot you, so what do you do? You cry. <laughs> That's what you do. You cry. And it was really, really strong. It was very powerful just as, like, a trio. It was very powerful even just as a duo combo. And even in the pro meta, it did see some play combating a lot of these goats metas because you could actually just be like a ball of disruption so yeah that's my pick for the most horrifying meta of all time but honestly all of these are horrifying in one way or another and uh yeah it it seems a little bit traumatizing thinking about some of them but yeah still i have a little bit of a soft spot for some of these because uh you know it was my uh my origins dealing with this this is my world war ii okay i'm just i'm just joking <laughs> anyways decide to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content let me know which meta you think is the most horrifying meta of all time and uh i'll see you next time